Hi everyone, Stepan here. Uh, I'm going to play another game because the last one went pretty poorly. Uh, I'm just saying hello and good luck. Okay, why did I play d4 again? I really wanted to play e4 in the last two games. Let me just see if everything is okay with the board. Uh, yeah, uh, okay, last game I... What's the notification? Uh, last game I played the London, this game I'm going to play uh, c4. Last game, I'm sorry and I apologize to my to my opponent. I got really mad when he commented something in the chat. You can see that in the video. Uh, and I, I I couldn't calm down. And then when he blundered after his uh, salty comment, I, I was just really happy. And I, I behaved poorly. Let's just put it like that. Okay. Uh, Place the king's Indian. I'm going to go g3. Now let's get into the game. Uh, I don't have a lot of experience in the Fianchetto king's Indian, especially in lines with c6, queen a5, queen h5. Those are the ones that worry me the most, I would say. Uh, and I'm never sure whether to take on e5, play e4, or play d5. Uh, and I, I, I don't think there's that much theory involved here. Most of the lines aren't forcing, uh, and it's it's sort of about patterns. Okay, he wants to play a Benoni. He wants to play a Fianchetto Benoni. Uh, I could just take and play a simple game. Although I don't want to, I could also play e3 and play this sort of passively. But d5 is the critical move, so I'm going to play d5. Uh, I, I don't want to avoid challenges in training games, if if possible. Okay, so the Fianchetto Benoni is not one of my favorite openings. Uh, and it's one of the lines where I think the, the Fianchetto isn't as useful. Actually, here I remember some lines with knight takes. Knight takes, knight takes, queen takes, bishop e6, queen d3, bishop... No, 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 pawn takes, pawn takes. <clears throat> there are some lines with knight takes, but I, I, I'm not really sure. The point is to, to keep your bishop open. Uh, okay, he wants to take and, and take on e4 if I play. e4, so... Bishop g5 seems bad. Taking on e6 could be okay, but he takes with the bishop and I cannot play b3. Uh, I could simply play rook e1 which seems like a normal move. Does he then have takes, takes, knight e4? I don't think so. Knight g5 doesn't seem like a good option. Uh, I could take, take and go knight b5. How does he defend in that case? Uh, if d6, bishop e6, knight b5, bishop c4, knight d6, bishop e2 wins. So I should probably throw in rookie one first. Also, I could play e4 and take with the e-pawn, but I'm not sure I like that. I'm just gonna play rookie one. That seems like the, like the most flexible and sensible move. Going for a normal Benoni type of position. I don't think I've ever played the Fianchetto Benoni before, but that, that's just one of the risks involved with playing the Fianchetto against the King's Indian. You may not get the King's Indian. I'm out of coffee. That's not good. <clears throat> For some reason, he's avoiding taking on d5. Yeah, now he takes. I don't think he has a better choice. So now knight d7, 
probably e4. And now I may consider routing my knight to c4. Okay, he prevents e4, which is probably a good idea, but I can reinforce it with knight d2. Knight d2 threatening e4, if he goes bishop g4, I have h3. I like knight d2, I'm going to play knight d2. I don't think there's any risk involved. If he plays knight d7, I'm playing e4. This is a common maneuver which I want to do anyway, so I think he sort of gave me a tempo to do it. I don't think bishop f5 was correct, even though, as I said, I don't have a lot of experience here, or any. And one great thing about uh, the bishop on g2 is once you get to play e5, b7 is under a lot of pressure. So since e4 is now unstoppable, I think I'm better here. If, I, if, if somebody showed me this position, I would say white is better because he still hasn't developed the d7 knight and knight c4 is coming and e4 is coming he's gonna have to prevent e5 so he has to play knight d7 at some point so knight d7 e4 well yeah he actually cannot play knight d7 now because e4 wins the bishop so bishop f5 may be a really bad move because where does the bishop go? He could go back to c8. He could play knight a6, knight c7, which is a common maneuver reinforcing b5. But in that case, I go e4 and I go e5. And once he takes... Can I go d6, threatening bishop b7? I think it's a bit premature. Probably should play knight a6 or <clears throat> or a6. But if he plays a6, I'm going e4 and then a4. So yeah, bishop f5 is a is a bad move. It has to be a bad move. Because it's not easy to develop for him now. Yeah, knight a6 makes sense. So I'm going to go e4. And if he goes bishop d7, I'm going to consider knight c4. Because then he has to play... Okay, he throws this in first. Do I have to play f3? Because I don't want to play f3. <coughs> If I play f3, he plays bishop c8, probably. How does he defend the pawn on d6? So f3, bishop c8, knight d6. He has to play knight c7, I think. Because otherwise I have knight b5, winning the pawn. But I also have knight c4, bishop f4. So I think I need this tempo. I think I need this f3 tempo. Okay, so f3, bishop c8, knight c4, knight c7, bishop f4. How does he defend? I'm playing f3. I don't think he can defend the pawn on d6. e4 is sufficiently defended, so I don't really need fe4 he plays bishop d7 well 
After knight c4, what can he do? Knight c4, b5, knight d6, b4, knight e2. Should I go bishop f4 first? Is bishop f4 more precise? Knight c4, b5, knight d6, b4. He has bishop f8. Okay, I'm playing knight c4. I don't see why not, so I'm just going to do it. <coughs> I have bishop f4 coming and he's gonna have to move his bishop again or sacrifice the d6 pawn with b5 I like bishop f4 and on bishop f8 I'm going a4 to prevent b5 okay bishop f4 bishop f8 a4 I don't think I have e5 straight away A4 quickly. <clears throat> I need to prevent B5. Now I could also consider Knight B5, Bishop B5, A B5. <clears throat> Knight B8 is forced, and I go B6, winning. I think. So, if he doesn't do anything, knight b5, bishop b5, a b5, knight b8 forced, b6, okay, he does this, that, that's a good move. Otherwise, I think I was winning. Okay, so now we have to have a look at e5, bishop e5, e5, d5, bishop e5, winning, e5, rook e5, bishop e5, winning e5 knight d5 knight d5 wins so e5 seems good he's going to have to give up the exchange e5 d5 bishop e5 he has queen d8 there he has queen d8 forgot about queen d8 e5 d5 Bishop e5. I could go knight e5. I could also go <coughs> e5, d5, d6, queen d8, bishop d5. Oh, this is a tricky position. e5 d5 d6 if bishop d6 then knight d6 and on e4 i have knight e8 on e5 d5 d6 queen d8 i take bishop e5 he plays bishop c6 probably Wait, does bishop d6 work? <clears throat> or knight d6? 
bishop takes d6 bishop takes d6 e5 bishop e5 no it doesn't work e5 d5 d6 queen d8 is it better to play knight e5 i think it may be i'm playing e5 and then i'll decide i think e5 has to be correct the only thing after knight e5 is that he may have knight h5 but then I have knight g6, knight f4, <coughs> and knight f4. Okay, now either knight e5 or d6. If knight e5, what can he do? If he plays queen d8, I can take on d7. I think I like knight e5 most. Also, bishop e5 is tempting. Bishop e5, he has to play queen d8. Has to play queen d8. I don't want to allow bishop c6 too early, so I don't think d6 is the correct idea. Then again, if I blockade... Or knight e5, he has bishop d6. So I think bishop e5 is correct. And on queen d8, <coughs> I can go f4. And then d6 doesn't allow a blockade with bishop c6. I could also consider bishop f6, rook e1, queen e1, knight e4. I also like f4. f4 with d6 seems interesting. I'm giving up the g4 square for bishop g4, but then I have queen d2. Is 
This is a very tricky position. So what about just queen d2? Queen d2 seems like a normal move. I like queen d2. I'm, I'm not going to commit if I don't have to. I don't think I need a, a, a quick follow-up here. <clears throat> I think I should just get my rook to d1. I need another piece in play. For the moment it's hard for him to, to do much, I think. Okay, bishop f5 makes sense, threatening knight c2. So rook d1. Or even knight e4. Maybe I can get, just give up the exchange with f4. Because I don't think he's threatening on d5. I, I can just play f4. I could just take on f6. Bishop f6, queen f6. Avoiding all the complication. Okay, I think I'm going to do that. I'm too afraid of knight d3. And knight c2. So now I need to go rook takes. And now my plan was to go knight e4. To get two passed pawns in the center. Or to get two connected pawns in the center and to threaten the c5 pawn with d6 as a follow-up. Okay, knight e4. If bishop e4, then f e4 is fine. If queen d4, then I can just take and play rook e1. Okay, I'm playing knight e4. This was my idea, so I think I should go with it. Maybe it's not good, but I just want to push this pawn. This is a very complicated position. Okay, he does uh, he does exchange, but that that wins the rook. I can just go knight f6 check. Yeah, I mean he, he shouldn't have missed this. It was a very interesting position. It's still not over because he has knight d5. This pawn is going to be dangerous, but... <clears throat> and I need to make sure that I don't lose my knight.
but I think I can afford f4 just gaining a tempo and winning the b7 pawn think should be good I don't see any issues with it still I need to have I, I need to have some time on the clock for this end game so I'm not going to think too strategically or, or waste time my knights defend each other so that's good I can take on b7 and then blockade on d2. Okay, I'm taking the pawn. Okay, I'm going to block his bishop and threaten to take on g4. On, on f5, he's going to play bishop g4 and then I'm going to play knight e4 pre preparing the blockade on d2 and if he takes takes bishop g4 here here maybe bishop f3 first maybe bishop f3 first just to stay safe knight d6 bishop g4 Knight e4, if bishop f3, I can play knight cd2. Yeah, okay, this is good, this is fine. There are no tricks, I think. I could also just take on f7 and give up a piece and have a winning endgame and exchange up. That's also possible. Bishop g4, knight f7, king g7, knight e5, d2, knight d2. Yeah, he doesn't have d2, so I can just take on f7. What am I talking about? And if he plays bishop e6, I'm just going rook d1. Okay, I think this should be over. I don't think there are any tricks here. I'm just a rook up. The d pawn is not that scary. He wants to play bishop g4 with tempo. So I'm going rook d1 and on bishop g4 I'm going rook d2. No, on bishop g4 I'm taking, what am I talking about, rook d3. Yeah, I think that's it. <clears throat> Even if I give up my rook, I should be winning because I can take the f7 pawn as well. But I'm not going to give up my rook. Yeah, I don't think there's anything here. Bishop g7, I can take on f5, take on d3, I think. I could also take on f7 first. No, 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 this is simpler. I don't need to complicate anything. 
no need for complication. Now I'm threatening rook d8, winning the bishop. So he has to react. He has to play h6, I think h6 or bishop f6. Although both lose one of these two pawns. Yeah, okay, he just misses this. Okay, now what? Uh, let's win this one as well. For some reason, he isn't resigning. This is now more than hopeless. Okay, let's say good game. Okay, let's analyze the position. Uh, uh, ba, 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 ba. Okay. I had one inaccuracy. Yes. What? Oh, no. Now it's changing. I, I don't know if you can see this. It said 100% accuracy a while ago, and now it's analyzing and finding mistakes. Aww. Okay. I thought I had a perfect game. If g3 is the inaccuracy, I'm really mad. I actually talked about this already. It always says g3 is a mistake. Uh, let's see. Okay, we have a Fianchetto Benoni. e6, castles, rook e8. Rook e8 is uncommon. Ed5, cd5. Okay, now we transpose. Yeah, bishop f5 is a mistake. And I don't know if you guys can see this, but Ding Liden and Vashi Legrav game went like this. Vashil, uh, MVL played bishop f5, that's a really weird move. Okay, knight d2, knight a6, e4. We are still following the game. Bishop g4, f3, yes! Bishop d7, no, we are following Ding Liren, Vashil Legrav. Okay, uh, but Ding Liren, uh, Vashil Legrav played queen b8. Okay, so I'm playing like Ding Liren, I'm really happy. Plus 2.8, queen c7. Bishop f4, best move. a4, best move. Knight b4. Yeah, what I was talking about here is if he plays nothing, let's say. I was thinking this. Uh, uh, if he plays a6, then knight b5. And if bishop b5 here, knight b8. Yeah, why was I sure he has to play knight b8? He always has bishop. He always has knight b4. For some reason, I was just thinking of knight b8. Okay, knight b4, e5, blunder. Okay, bishop g5. That's a forcing move I didn't even consider. So he probably defends with bishop g7, because knight h5 seems bad. And then what? If bishop g5, bishop g7... Then I go back. That makes little sense to me. Okay, e5. e5 is not good. I'm sorry, I may sneeze. Oh. It loses all of my advantage. I should have kept the tension. Queen d8 forced. Queen d2 is okay. Bishop f5. f4. I was afraid of playing f4 because of bishop g4. I was afraid of this. And apparently I shouldn't have been afraid. Okay, bishop f6. And takes, takes, and knight e4. Yeah, he should have taken. And black is better. Wow. I knew that this position was complicated, but I didn't expect it to be better for him. How is this better for black? Okay, queen a6. That's, I would have played b3, I'm sure. And my rook is pinned. Uh, but yeah, queen d4 just loses and the whole rook. Okay. Uh, 
Well, this is a critical position I need to be looking at. Before this, I played really well. I punished bishop f5, and then I blundered with e5. e5 is the thematic move. I don't see what happens here. What, what do I go back? Queen d2, he does something. I don't know what he does. Let's say b6, what do I do? Bring my rook. Let's say he does nothing again. How do I proceed? Here he goes back. What's the way forward? Unless I play e5. Bishop f1 makes sense, okay. Let's say he does nothing again. Now what? I don't know. I, I, I wouldn't have repeated bishop g5 that many times. Maybe I would have tried to play f4. So if I move my bishop back, then he has b5. I'm not sure. I'm going to analyze this position in detail. Th this is very interesting to me and I, I'm not really sure that I would have played anything except for e5 in an actual tournament game. Because it seems very tempting. Okay, I'm going to analyze it. Thank you for watching. I'm really happy with the game. My rating is now 2340. Actually, 2343. That's my record rating. Uh, stay tuned for more chess. Bye-bye.